is being used to create this trial balance number, and we're out of balance by the 4,200. Then we'll record the other side of this, which is wages payable. That's going to be our only liability account. It was a pretty simplified trial balance, but there's our wages payable. We're going to scroll over to wages payable. It's going to be a credit. So here's wages payable. We're going to be in the credit side. I'm in X19. So within X19 equals, I'm going to go all the way to the left until I find wages payable, the last journal entry. 4,200 and enter. So there it is, wages payable, 4,200. This number then being used to create wages payable here, and we're back in balance. So our journal entry is back in balance and has been recorded here. Okay, so there's our process. Now, once again, we did something to work in process. And whenever we do that, we need to support this not only with the GL as we have here, but this only gives us the detail by date. We need to break it out by job and remember it's similar to like the accounts receivable being broken out not only by date but by customer who owes us the money work and process needs to be broken out not only by date on the gl but by job which job are we applying these costs to so if we do that that's where we're going to need this separate breakout here in the sub account so i'm going to go ahead and copy this and we'll bring it over i'm going to go all the way to the right to where our jobs are so here's our jobs over here, and I'll paste this down here. Okay, so, so now we're just going to apply this out. That 4,200 is broken out, job B15. We're in B15, direct labor, and we're going to say this was 1,200. And then B16, 900. Here's B16, direct labor, 900. And then we're going to say B... Uh, 17, 560, B17, 560, and then B18, 850, B18, 850, and finally B19, 690. So we're going to go over here to B19 and say 690. Now, if we add up our total jobs, they add up to direct materials, direct labor, these two add up to 1,230, being summed up across, being summed up vertically. Here's our total 1,230. That's the case for all jobs. If we add up all of them, they're all open. All these jobs, you can do it this way. All these jobs <laughs> add up to this amount. That should be equivalent to what's on the trial balance and GL. So. We can see over here, we noted that this work in process was used to create this number. And this number should be supported by this number and by the uh, work in process, the jobs. And, and it is. So we look good there. Uh, the last piece of this then is we're going to record this amount. This is the indirect labor. And that's going to be anything on the factory that we couldn't apply to a job. So if we have like supervisor salaries or something like that. We don't know which job they actually worked on, if any. <laughs> so they're, they're working on multiple jobs. So we have to basically apply their salary uh, to those jobs. If it's a maintenance or something in there, we, we might need, if it's anything that's in the uh, factory where we make things, if we're making guitars or whatnot, we need to be able to apply uh, those salaries out to the jobs. So that's going to be the indirect labor here. So it's still going to be wages payable because we're processing payroll, but the debit now not going to work and process because we don't know which job it's going to. It's going to go to the bucket, which is factory overhead. So we'll right click and copy factory overhead. We'll put that in B13, right click and paste 123. And then the amount is going to be 1,200. We'll credit something, run 1,200 as well. I'm going to do that with a little like negative of that number that's like negative sub plug formula <laughs> you could put just a negative 1200 that's fine too but and then that's going to go to wages payable again it's kind of like processing payroll like we're, we could have said paid cash we're not dealing with any of the withholdings here we're just having a simplified payroll journal entry rather than debiting expense however it's going to an, an asset account an inventory account in this case overhead until we've we've 
figure out a way to apply that overhead to a job. So we're going to right click on wages payable. We'll put that in B14, right click and paste one, two, three. And there we have it. Now let's record this one. We're going to post it to the general ledger. Here's factory overhead. Here's factory overhead. It's like the third to last uh, asset account. Same order on the GL. So factory overhead is down here. So it's right there in S26. So within S26, I'm going to say equals, go left. I'm going to find that last account. There it is, factory overhead, and pick up that C13. Uh, Enter. So within S26, it equals C13. Bring in the 550 previously in there up by 1,200 to 1,750. That 1,750 then is being used to create the trial balance. We're out of balance by 1,200 until we record the other side. So here's the other side. Wage is payable. It's our only liability account, which is nice in this nice small trial balance. So we're going to go find wage is payable. There it is. It's going to be in the credit side again. I'm in X20. X20. I'm going to say equals, and then we'll scroll left and find that, that account. So we're scrolling left. Wage is payable. We'll pick that up in D14 and enter. So here's wages payable equals D14. It was at a credit of 4,200. It goes up in the credit direction, 1,200 to 5,400. That then is used to create the trial balance. And the trial balance is back in balance. Debits equal in the credits. Debits minus the credits equals zero. Still no effect on net income uh, here. And, and again, even though we kind of paid wages and you might and are thinking if we've thought about companies other than manufacturing companies is probably that there should be an expense related to wages expense but no uh, it's there's not an expense because that was part of inventory anything that we had to pay for in order to conform or convert the raw materials to inventory is not an expense until we sell the inventory it's part of the cost of inventory.